a warm greeting. Today is Thursday, April 25, 2024. This is meteorologist Ruben Garcia. Over the past few months, we've been discussing the possibility of a hyperactive season in the Atlantic Ocean Basin. One of the main reasons is the imminent development of the La Nina phenomenon in the Pacific waters. However, in today's video, I'd like to talk about what we can anticipate for the upcoming hurricane season in the eastern Pacific region. This is of interest to the sectors in western Central America and the region of Mexico. Let's begin the video by analyzing the surface ocean temperatures. First, I want you to notice that temperatures remain above normal just south of Mexico. Additionally, we still have the presence of the El Niño phenomenon in the Pacific. However, it is rapidly weakening, and it is expected to dissipate during the month of May, leading to neutral ENSO conditions. Furthermore, during the summer, it is anticipated that the La Nina phenomenon will develop and persist during the 2024 hurricane season in the eastern Pacific region. Now, what effects will the La Nina phenomenon have on cyclonic activity in the eastern Pacific? We'll be discussing that in the coming minutes. Additionally, we'll talk about the projections for precipitation over the next months, especially for the region of Mexico, where much of the country is experiencing severe drought. When the La Nina phenomenon develops in the Pacific, it tends to suppress cyclonic activity in the eastern Pacific region because it increases the easterly wind shear. These wind shears hinder cyclonic formation and also impede the strengthening of tropical cyclones. Essentially, the opposite happens in the eastern Pacific region compared to the Atlantic region. When La Nina develops, we typically see more hurricanes in the Atlantic. Preliminarily, it seems that this hurricane season in the eastern Pacific will be near or below normal. Remember that this is subject to the development of the La Nina phenomenon. However, as you can see in this graph, the chances of La Nina occurring during the summer are extremely high. Furthermore, the La Nina phenomenon alters circulations in the tropics. In years when La Nina occurs, rainfall and precipitation in the Atlantic Basin are favored, while in the eastern Pacific, air descends from higher levels of the atmosphere, creating high-pressure conditions and little precipitation. This is another factor that hinders the formation of tropical systems during La Nina in the eastern Pacific. Unfortunately, it also means less rainfall in the region of Mexico, where as you can see in this graph, significant droughts are being reported in sectors of the north, northwest, and also in central areas of the country. We know that many of our followers have been asking when relief from the drought is expected. Unfortunately, the projections are not very encouraging. Let's briefly look at the projections from global models for the hurricane season. Here we have the projection from the CANCIPS model for the months of July, August, and September. Notice that it predicts the development of the La Nina phenomenon in the Pacific, which would reduce cyclonic activity in the eastern Pacific. Additionally, as we move towards the eastern region of Mexico, you can see these blue colors representing colder temperatures than usual that could be reported south of Mexico and in waters west of Mexico. This is another factor that would hinder cyclone formation and the strengthening of those that do develop. Therefore, this model is projecting less precipitation than usual for much of western Mexico, especially for central and northern areas of the country currently affected by severe drought. It seems that significant precipitation is not expected during the summer, so I'm afraid the drought will continue for several months. In contrast to the eastern Pacific region, note that the Gulf of Mexico region and the Caribbean are expecting more precipitation than usual. The states bordering the Gulf of Mexico and southern Mexico could receive significant rainfall during this summer. We have the ensemble members of the North American models also projecting the La Nina phenomenon for the peak of the season. They also have cooler than usual temperatures in the eastern Pacific region or just west of Mexico. Again, this would reduce the potential for tropical cyclone development, and those that do form will likely have more difficulties in strengthening. Like the CANCIPS model, a fairly dry summer is projected for sectors of northern and northwestern Mexico, while there will be abundant rainfall for the southern region of Mexico, especially the states bordering the Gulf of Mexico, Yucatan, and the southern region of Mexico. This rainfall will likely be associated with the cyclones moving through the Caribbean Sea and the Gulf of Mexico region, as greater cyclonic activity is expected in the Atlantic Basin. I also wanted to show you the projection from the European model, which as you can see is forecasting the development of 17 tropical storms when the normal is 15. Additionally, it is projecting 7 hurricanes when the normal is 8. In terms of accumulated cyclonic energy, it is projecting a season very close to normal. Judging by the European model projection, it seems that the 2024 hurricane season, which begins on May 15th for the eastern Pacific region, will be close to normal. In this image, the European model projects the density of tropical cyclones in the eastern Pacific region. Represented by the blue colors, it forecasts less density of tropical storms, which is also an indication of a season close to normal or less active than normal. 
Additionally, I wanted to show you the forecast from the Mexican Navy's Secretariat of the Navy, where they are projecting 19 tropical storms, 9 hurricanes, and of these, 3 major hurricanes. When we compare this with the normal, which is 15 tropical storms, 8 hurricanes, and 4 major hurricanes, we can see that they are projecting a season close to normal for the eastern Pacific Basin. Furthermore, I wanted to mention that in the Atlantic region, we are anticipating one of the most active seasons in history. Typically, when we see the formation of tropical cyclones in the Atlantic, this also reduces cyclonic activity in the eastern Pacific. In summary, a season close to normal is expected due to the development of the La Nina phenomenon, which will increase wind shear across the eastern Pacific. Additionally, cooling of waters towards the west and south of Mexico is anticipated, which will hinder the strengthening and development of cyclones. Unfortunately, it seems that the drought will continue for several months as significant precipitation is not projected until August, especially in central, northern, and northwestern regions of the country. However, for the southern states and those bordering the Gulf of Mexico and the Caribbean, more precipitation than usual is expected, so the drought in this area may diminish during the summer. Well, that's all for this video. I invite you to subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking on the red button below the video that says subscribe, then click on the bell icon to stay informed during the hurricane season. Here at Hurricane Info, I'll be alert to bring you the latest information about the eastern Pacific hurricane season starting on May 15th. I send warm regards to the residents of the western coast of Central America and also grateful for the support from the residents of Mexico. I'll be accompanying you again this year. Thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next video.